and welcome back to another episode. Please thank you for these questions. This one came in from LinkedIn, actually. So they could come anywhere Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, email, text me. Everything's underneath. I'm everywhere. All right. I'm probably slowest on Facebook. So like if you're going to choose, I would choose not Facebook. Uh, but shout out to Facebook, guys. You guys are good on the lives, but man, it takes me forever to check Facebook messages. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. If you don't know what to comment, put a robot emoji. It helps with the algorithm. I got a question from someone. Hey, Dan, first off, I'm a fan. I watch your YouTube videos, greatly accelerated my knowledge and appreciation of the industry. Uh, I'm currently uh, doing product development for pharma and an imaging CRO. And I was wondering if you'd be willing to connect me to any CRAs that have experience in the screening and eligibility process. So I can ask some questions in order to better understand their problems. So if you are in a CRA in the space and you want to help out somebody, this is networking, guys. This is a form of networking. You never know who you end up helping out. Just saying, message me here. Uh, Or if you want to educate and entertain me and probably others, it would be great to see a video on what the screening and eligibility process looks like, what source information they are using when looking at inclusion and exclusion how they maintain evidence for their decisions and things to consider either for SDV, SDR, and audit. This is a complicated question. I wish I could show you examples. We can't. Uh, In the CRA Academy, we have a mock study. So it's still not answering your question because how you determine eligibility is holistically, but also very comprehensively. So You literally, as a CRC, PI, or CRA, you have to go line by line through the inclusion exclusion criteria, which are usually 15 points each, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, literally line by line and figure out how this particular patient, they call them subject, but how this particular patient proves that they meet that IE criteria, each one, line by line. Sometimes you'll see most of them, but not some. So you're going to be like, okay, well, where, how do we prove that number nine on the inclusion criteria uh, is actually accurate for this patient? And sometimes you just rely on things like progress notes. Other times you rely on lab results. Other times you rely on prior efficacy assessments that were done as part of the subject's medical history. Other times you look at their medications, their con meds. They're usually around efficacy, con meds, disease history, medical history, responses, things like that. You got to find these things. They're not all nice and clean in one place. You got to find sometimes it's hospital records. Sometimes it's pharmacy records. Sometimes it's all of this that I'm mentioning. Sometimes it's physician narrative. Sometimes it's clinician intake notes. Sometimes it's another physician's notes. Sometimes it's another provider's notes. It's it's sometimes patient reported. Depends on what the IE criteria is. So eligibility is one of the toughest things for CRAs to SDR, which is source data review, because it's it could become very overwhelming to find all these things. And because we're dealing with real people and their real patients and their real medical records from various sources, as many as we can gather for the study. And sometimes the site is not able to gather all of these medical histories. So you got to go with what you have. And then you got to figure out, okay, does the sponsor want us to verify inclusion criteria number eight, or is the physician's progress note enough to justify it? Or do we actually need supporting medical record to justify it? But the physician is a doctor. So is that a medical record? This is where it gets tricky. There's no way to standardize this in the industry because studies are all so unique, so different. You can be in this industry for 30 years. I don't care how long you've been. You take one study, you compare it to another study. There's a lot of differences. There's a lot of similarities as far as the concepts. But there's a lot of differences as far as the details, every single study. So it's very tough 
to determine eligibility if you want to do it like a hundred percent by the book. Now it's not impossible. And sometimes the sites are nice and on the actual source where it has the inclusion exclusion criteria at every screening and at every randomization visit, the checklist appears. Sometimes the site writes next to it, how these things, how they determine these things. Uh, I noticed that when I'm monitoring one of my sites, they actually do that. They go through every IE criteria and they write down like even a sloppy writing, but I try to read it to see, okay, they're talking about the latest CAT scans. Uh, so I need to go now to the CAT scans and see, and to confirm it. And if it's not there, I need to request it from the site or they go to the med records. Well, where's the pharmacy? I need to look at the condiments. Can I find it somewhere? Is it in the EDC, but not in the source? Is it in the source, but not in the EDC? What about medical history? Is it in the medical history of the EDC or is it missing? Because if it comes up again, then it could be an adverse event. All these things, then this not even, now it's, we're not even getting into eligibility anymore. So it's complicated. Good luck to anyone out there trying to uh figure out a way to streamline this it's i don't want to say impossible on anything but no one's been able to do it for good reason there's just so many data sources to pull from every patient's different every study's different and every site process is different so when you're a cra and your task is the sdv sdr you do the most with, you do the best with what you can and that's, I think, how research has been run. If you could figure out a technology to streamline this, hats off to you. You're probably an entrepreneur. I just can't think of it because it's case-by-case -case basis. And this is why I think CRAs are never going away. So that's good for us. Shout out to the CRA Academy students. We're enrolling now for November class. Still a few spots left. And shout out to the CRC Academy students because they do the same thing just on the site side. CRAs do this stuff on the sponsor CRO side. So anyways, hopefully this helps. I try to make it help. Let me know more specifics and we'll get into it later. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.